Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to be performing the synthesis of a substituted chalcone experiment. Now, this is a follow up experiment on the uh, Friedel Crafts acylation experiment that we had done previously. So, in this experiment, we'll be using a substituted benzaldehyde and a substituted acetophenone. We will be using 4 methyl acetophenone, which was prepared and was your final product of the Friedel Crafts acylation. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pre-weigh a 50 mil Erlenmeyer flask. To our 50 mil Erlenmeyer flask, we're going to be adding 0 0.005 moles of our substituted benzaldehyde. Our substituted benzaldehyde for today is 2,4-dichlorobenzaldehyde. Okay, so we've gone ahead, ahead and added 0. 005 moles of 2,4-dichlorobenzaldehyde. We're going to re-weigh our pre-weighed Erlenmeyer flask to get the exact weight added. Okay, so we have our 2,4-dichlorobenzaldehyde in our 50 ml Erlenmeyer flask. To this, we're going to add 0 0.005 moles of our 4-methyl acetophenone. Now, the 4-methyl acetophenone is coming from the, our Friedel Crafts isolation experiment that we had prepared before. And I didn't have quite enough from the Friedel Crafts experiment, so I added a little bit of the stock for methyl acetophenone. So again, we're adding 0 0.005 moles of 4-methyl. And that was four methyl acetophenone that we just added. However, we used our own preparation from the Friedel Crafts isolation experiment. Okay, two our substituted benzaldehyde and our substituted acetophenone. We're going to add four mils of 95% ethanol. We'll also be adding a stir bar. until we get all of the solids to dissolve. This may require some heating, but we need to get all of the solids to dissolve into solution. Okay, so we got all of our reagents to dissolve in the 95% ethanol. There's no more crystals. Um, that did require some heating, so we let it cool the room temperature before we proceed on to the next step. So we're going to put it back on the stir plate and get it stirring. And to our mixture now, we're going to add 0 0.5 milliliters of 60% sodium hydroxide solution. Okay. 
once we add the 60% sodium hydroxide solution, we're going to let it mix until we get a solid to form inside of our 50 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Now we want to make sure solid forms and it's not just cloudiness. So we'll wait until the cloudiness goes away. This could take three to five minutes. I don't know if you can see, but we've got some cloudiness forming now. You can start to see the stir bar is having a little bit of a harder time because we're starting to get some solids forming as well. So again, we're going to let this mix for about three to five minutes. Okay, so it's been about four minutes or so. Um, and as you can see, we have a nice bit of solid that's formed. That yellow solid in there is our chalcone. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next stop now that we have our solid precipitate. Okay, so we have our substituted chalcone here. To this, we're going to add 10 milliliters of ice cold water. We're going to use a spatula to stir to make sure the chalcone is broken up. Add a couple big chunks in there. Then we're going to use, we're going to transfer this to a small beaker. And we're going to use ice cold water to aid in the transfer. We can, we want to avoid transferring the stir bar. More ice cold water. Well, we didn't avoid transferring the stir bar, but we'll take care of that later. Again, just getting all of the chalcone transferred from the flask to the beaker. One more little bit of water. Okay. And we're going to stir, just break up those big chunks. And what's nice about our spatula is that it's magnetic. So we can extract our stir bar, make sure all that chalcone stays in there. And we're going to turn on our vacuum. Use a little bit of water, wet our filter paper. Okay, and then we're just going to use our Hirsch funnel and filter paper to filter our chalcone. Okay, so we vacuum filtered our chalcone. We ran into a little bit of a problem. The school, because of the coronavirus, turned off the vacuum. So just had to rig up a little empty water bottle and manually vacuum our product. But we've done that. 
And as you can see, we have our dried product in there now. We're going to go ahead and let that air dry for about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. We let our uh, chalcone air dry, but I've gone ahead. I've gone ahead and transferred it from the Hirsch funnel onto a watch glass. Now we're going to go ahead and weigh this so we can get the weight of our crude product. Okay, so let's get the weight of our crude product of our chalcone. You see we've weighed out, measured out the chalcone. Here's our weight. Okay, so after weighing our crude chalcone, I went ahead and transferred it to an Erlenmeyer flask. What we're going to do now is we're going to recrystallize our crude product with boiling hot 95% ethanol in order to purify our product. So I'm going to add the boiling hot 95% ethanol to this until the chalcone just dissolves. Once it just dissolves, I'm going to stop adding 95% ethanol and I'm going to let it cool to room temperature so that I will start recrystallizing it. Once cooled to room temperature, I will move it onto ice. So let's go ahead and start adding the 95% ethanol. And swirl. Get it dissolving. So again, I will add the hot 95% ethanol until the crude chalcone just dissolves. And as soon as I get to that point, I will remove it from the heat and stop adding 95% ethanol. Okay, so it took a little while, but I added the hot, boiling hot 95% ethanol until all of our crude chalcone has just dissolved. And it is just dissolved in there. So we're going to remove it from the heat and let cool the room temperature. Okay, so we've let our <clears throat> chalcone recrystallize at room temperature in the 95% ethanol. As you can see, we're starting to get some pretty sweet looking crystals. Um, looks much better than the crude product. So now that we're room temperature, we're going to go ahead and place it on ice for a few minutes just to finish off the crystallization. Okay, so at this point, we've allowed the crystals to cool in an ice bath for quite a while. Let me go ahead and remove them. And we're going to transfer them to our Hirsch funnel again, and we'll be doing vacuum filtration again. And to do our vacuuming, we're going to be using our trusty little water bottle again. This is going to take me a little bit. 
Okay, so we transferred all of our recrystallized chalcone into our Hirsch funnel. As you can see, we've now evaporated all or sucked, vacuumed all the liquid, all the 95% ethanol through the Hirsch funnel. Um, we're still pulling some air with our empty water bottle and we're gonna let this dry for, I don't know, about another 20, 30 minutes. Okay, so we have our dried, purified, recrystallized chalcone. Now we're gonna go ahead and weigh it. Okay, so this is the weight of our final chalcone product. And this is the IR of our final product, our chalcone. Okay, so that concludes the synthesis of substituted chalcones experiment. We'll be saving our chalcone product because we'll be using it for the green epoxidation of chalcones experiment, which we'll be conducting next. Thank you.